Hi everyone and welcome to another episode, lesson on Paint With Heart. I'm Cindy Harrison, your host and artist of Paint With Heart here in New Hampshire. And uh, we have a celebration today for a Chinese New Year. 2018 is the year of the dog. So Melissa and I, which I'll introduce you to in a second, came up with the thought of doing a treat container for our furry friends. And before we get going, we'll let her talk to you more about it. Here is my bestie, Melissa Reyes. Hi everybody, I'm here and I've got Roxy, my grand dog. And uh, for ce my celebration of the year, the dog. Hey Roxy, hi, should we play? Okay, <laughs> well she doesn't paint, so she's gonna have to go play outside. But today we're playing, and um, I'm so excited about that because the word of the week is play, and Cindy came up with this great way to um, play and paint and have um, this little collaboration so that we can kind of play all week with this idea because putting together your um, I, I want to talk about like thinking about the year of the dog for the whole year, not just for the week, not just playing just for fun for this, but thinking about it as, in terms of um, that playfulness that our animals or our pets bring for us. Um, and I think that's what the whole essence of having the year of the dog is about. Everybody has some experience with that, um, whether you're a dog lover or not. And I think that Cindy captures that idea in this art project. So I just wanna think about that like all year long, that, that joyfulness that you have when you have a pet in your life, just the way Roxy was just like so excited about jumping on my lap. So I hope that that kind of comes through in today's project. So thanks Cindy for bringing that to us. So I picked up this jar at the hobby store, but you can use any jar you have in your home. Um, obviously, if you're going to be putting dog treats in it, you're going to want it to be, you know, a bigger jar um, so that you can hold more treats. I like the, you know, this has one of those airtight lids uh, so that we know that anything we put in there will stay fresh for our furry friends. I don't own a dog, so I had to go borrow someone else's dog, picture of a dog, but, and this guy is so cute, he really is. Not that I'm a dog lover, but this guy is really cute. And I would suggest that you wash your glass off with some rubbing alcohol first. When that's dry, and it should be dry relatively fat quickly, take, some decoupage and you're going to apply it to the back of the paper. So be generous and apply it to the back of the paper and then you're going to put it onto your surface and you want to iron it out so you can wipe off any excess. So once it's on where you want it, just smooth it out and then wipe off the excess that comes out from underneath it. Then what we're gonna do is hit that with a blow dryer. So go ahead and do that. Oh yeah. Yeah, the border so, collie. Yeah, so what you do is you're gonna cut around the outline of him. Mm -hmm. And I know it's kinda gonna get rid of some of his furriness, but try to do your best to just, you know, if are you doing it on a clear jar or on a solid white jar? I have multiple things I could use. I have a mason jar. Yes, I was just gonna suggest that. Okay. So once everybody, everyone um, puts that on there, hit it with the blow dryer. I wanna go get some rubbing alcohol so I can quickly wash that down so I can start painting it. Now I'm gonna do one on both sides so that I can do the butterfly too. I think this would go really nice on a solid background as well. The nice thing about the rubbing alcohol is it, it dries up real fast. And you can even put a design on the cap as well. So if you're on a clear jar, what's really nice about that 
is that you take your design and you put it inside your jar. So if I do the on the opposite side, I can put the design inside the jar like that. And you can see your line drawing right away. So that's what's really nice about a clear jar. If you don't have a clear jar, if you're doing it on a solid jar, what I would do is take this back side and either draw over the line that you created with a pen or go over the whole design with your graphite pencil. Like that. And then when you come over to your jar, if it's, if it's a white jar and you start drawing, the line work, I don't know if you can see it, but the line work will come onto your jar. I see it there, it's very um, thin. Now I made marks, but it, it is there. So if it's on a solid glass, you'll see it. How are we doing? So I need to glue this onto the jar first before I can do that, right? Yeah, because you're gonna be painting the butterfly over the puppy's nose. So you have to um, know where that nose is gonna be and it has to be already adhered to the jar. Okay, so what do I do first? So we put the decoupage on here mm -hmm. and then you put him on there mm -hmm. and you smooth him out so that you get out any excess decoupage and then you blow dry him. Okay. If you want to make him correctable, put some decoupage over top of him. So if you get paint somewhere where you don't want it, you can get rid of it easier. If you're doing it on a frosted jar, I would test that jar first to see if the frost is just topical because some frost is only on the top of the glass in that. So when you, um, if you were to put a piece of tape on it like this and put it on the frost and peel it off, you'll peel off the frost. So I'd be careful about that one. Well, guess I had it closer to the top. Make sure that you have enough room for your butterfly when you're putting your dog on there. Or cat. Or flower. Or flower. So make sure you have enough room for the butterfly. And then it's not set as important the name of the colors that we're going to use today as it is the color family that we're using. Does that make sense? So a blue, a red, an orange, a yellow. There's even some decoupage that is dishwasher safe. So if we were planning on washing this in the dishwasher, um, I would use the decoupage for dishwasher as well as I would use a glass enamel paint that you can bake it in the oven um, so that it won't, uh, so it'll be dishwasher safe as well. But I'm thinking that what we're gonna do today is hand wash only. So I thought about doing it with markers and definitely it, it would go, we could go quicker with a marker, but I'm going to do a blended kind of look. So first off, because I know yellow, we start with the lightest value and work up. And yellow is a very see-through color. So I'm gonna start with white. It's a light color, but it's also more solid. And because I'm working on glass, I'm gonna use a paint adhesion medium. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to use my three round. 
and all the areas that have white dots, all the areas that are orange and yellow, we're going to take that and paint them, pick up a little bit of medium, pick up a little bit of the white, and I'm going to paint those areas. I'm gonna blow dry that quickly. And while yours is drying, I'm going to take and put my flower on. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use carousel pink. Make sure all the water is out of your brush before you go into the paint adhesion medium. Next color will be our cad yellow. Now we've already got the medium on there mixed in with the first layer of white paint. So you really don't need to go back into your medium right now because your paint's gonna go on top of your paint. And I'm going to take that and put it on all the petal, all the um, openings on the bottom half of the wing and the three and the little dot there of the bigger one and the biggest one on the left. And as I'm doing the echinacea, I'm going to do the dark chocolate first on the center. The next color we're going to use is um, bright orange. That color is going to outline the left side of the first three top and bottom of the center and then the tops of the rest. So how do we do that? With our brush, I'm going to flatten, flatten the brush out and run it through the puddle. So let's see if I can do it this way. If this is yellow, when I go to do the orange, I'm either going to do it just down the side or I'm going to pull the orange down from the top and up from the bottom. Can you see that? So it's down one side or top and bottom. And you can soften that makeup line with some water. On the bottom five here, there's white. I left some white, so I'm going to have to go back in 
and we will put some white. The bottom two are, are actually on the bottom. And then this one's on the bottom. And then I just pulled these. that help you to see it better? Doesn't look like much at the moment, but it will look like something in a moment, a second. For my center of my echinacea, the next color I'm gonna do is burnt sienna. Get all the water out. And I'm going to just draw like dots. If they don't show up, we can add more of the chocolate. Now that that's dry on our butterfly, we're going to go to the cad red. And you need very little of this. And again, on the corner, if I drag my brush, flatten it out like that. See how that's flat? And put one side of the brush into that color. And then right where we put the orange, we're now going to put this red. On the other ones, wherever the, um, other than the two inside and the one on the bottom, all the red is on top of the orange. I'm also going to take some of that orange and add some of that too. Now, the next color we're going to use is sapphire blue. And that color is what I tinted some of the white areas. I didn't lose all of my white, but I put some of the blue in there. I'll go like this, you can see it better. So pick up some of that. If you want to mix it with your white and make a softer blue color, you can. And then we're going to go over to those white areas and you're just going to kind of touch some of the white with the blue. And while you're doing that, I'm going to take some of the cranberry wine and pull some of this color out from the center of my pet echinacea petals. Not, not too particular on my technique. Kind of an impressionistic flower. Okay. All that's left for us to do is to base in the body, legs, and all the black areas. I used the black. And don't forget to mix it with your textile, uh, textile medium, sorry, <laughs> your paint adhesion medium. Put the body in. This, the way this guy is viewed, he only has like one big fat body. But butterflies have longer bodies. And then with a liner brush, I would go with your um, Tenot liner brush, the real thin one, if you can. And then draw those legs in.
And don't forget his antenna. Now, when you're gonna go around these yellow and blue and white areas, if you need to use the thin liner brush, you can do that first if you're afraid. It's easier to get thicker than it is to get thinner. So if you, I'm gonna turn this upside down. Start and outline all those colored areas. And if two dots kind of got stuck together, just separate them with a black line or graphite, whatever your dark color is you're using. And don't be afraid to switch up brushes as you get to areas that are a little bigger and you can use a, a bigger brush. And black's a really nice color because it hides a lot of, as they say, multitude of sins. It can reshape whatever area that you might have misshapen with a previous color. So see how that goes? You want to get between two colors, just use that fine liner brush. And any paint that might have gotten up outside of your line work, this covers it right up. So if it goes on too thin, you might want to put a second coat. That's fine. If it goes on fine the first time, then leave it. If you've accidentally covered over some of your white areas and you want to, um, you just put them back in with the white. You can make everything more solid by adding another application of color. Don't forget to keep adding your paint adhesion medium when you're going onto the glass. If you're just going straight back onto black on black, then you don't need to. But as long as the first layer on the glass has paint adhesion medium in it. Sometimes we wait until the end to put the white white and blue dots on instead of having to go all the way around them. That's up to you. If you're in pain right now, just paint over them and go back after and add them. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Although it's kind of fun to try to go around them. How's everyone's looking now? Oh, pretty. Oh, I love the colors. So thank you. <laughs> I didn't have a line drawing and I trying to figure out how to get that little bug to show up on his nose, her nose. We're going to, we're going to work on that in a second. You will. Yeah. And then uh, I need to make it look like two wings. We're going to do so, that too. Okay. But other than that, you know, it's I fun. love the colors. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna help you separate the wings. I'm gonna help you um, put them on the nose. Okay. Yay! Yeah, fun. Thank you. Oh. Very good. Very Look at puppy. Wow. Look at him. He looks like he's ready to play too. Yes. Or she, Mia. She's ready to yeah. play. 
Oh, look at that one. I That's lovely. How's your show? Oh, uh, it's not as good as Maddie's. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yay, hey, you're well on your way. All you gotta do is put some black outlines. You are you're there. That's right. cool. Okay. Ophelia's next on my list. Oh, yeah. oh I like that. Oh yes. It's cool. Love the colors. I love it. Marina. Oh. I'm just wait I'm winging my stencil, so cool. What I what I'm noticing is that um People are afraid to put the butterfly right onto. My intention was to have the butterfly sitting on his nose. So that meant you kind of had to cover up part of the face. Yeah. Most everybody is doing this because <laughs> they don't yeah. want to paint over their dog. <laughs> But that's okay. It's like the butterfly is coming in for a landing. <laughs> <laughs> but it all works. It all works. So now we need to separate our the front wing from the back wing and uh, do some more detail on his body and legs and antenna. Okay, so how we're going to do that is mix some white with the black and make a gray, a light gray value. And again, we don't need any more paint adhesion medium because we're going right on top of the black that already has some paint adhesion medium in it. And I'm going to draw a little dash on the antenna, maybe a little bit more white. Maybe a lot of white. It takes a lot of white to lighten up something. Okay. I'm going to do a little um, little stroke on his head. And then I'm going to do dots on his body of that white. And then we can do some strokes. Don't connect them on his legs. You see how I did that? So the strokes on his legs are not connected. To separate his wings, I'm going to mix the sapphire blue with some of the white and make a, a light blue value. More white than blue. And where the wing would come down, follow this, the tallest one, and where that comes down, you're going to just draw a thin line between the blacks. See how I did that? That's how you separate those two. So yep, yeah, so you can go around, if you take your paper off the back, you'll see where you might have missed some uh, areas and it, it's too see-through and you want to go back and you want to deepen them or reshape them. If you wanted to separate the, I didn't separate the bottom section from the top section in winter green, so I'm going to just add some uh, olive yellow, olive green, I mean, and some paint adhesion medium. And then I'll paint a leaf. And I'll flatten my round brush, squiggle, 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 and twist and pull. And then I'll take some plantation pine and add a dimension. There you go. Mm -hmm. So whether you have a dog or not, doesn't matter. 
And, oh, if you want to know how I did these guys, these are watercolor paper butterflies. And I painted them with acrylics, but it's on watercolor paper. And I'm going to glue um, pin backs to them. This was one my girlfriend did for me. This one here. And you can have it be dimensional and would we'll glue the pin back to the body lengthwise with the um, opening on the bottom so that it doesn't fall off when if you're um, wearing it and it comes unlatched that's on create this it replace on the paint with heart page okay great so yeah I think that's pretty cool how you doing? Oh, see, you did it. Yeah, it's getting there. I have to lighten up that line and then do the the body. I was just about to put little dots on this body. Can you see? Let me put paper in there. Yeah, I bet I need to make them a head and a little antenna. Okay. All right. Well, let's say our goodbyes. See, look, that's Roxy's mom and dad, and on that card, on that picture. And it, Roxy. it looks like Roxy, huh? That's Roxy's dad and then the mom and their border collies. And um, be fun loving, enjoy the simple things, simple. Smile, relax, and play. And they're in the back of the truck of my niece. And at that time, I had no idea that I'd end up being um, the grandmom of this pup. They had eight puppies, and my son ended up adopting one. Come here, Roxy. Come here, come here. No, no. Oh my gosh, you're so Roxy. Come here, baby. Come on. Come on. Okay, see? Okay. Up, up, up. Okay, there she is. Oh, there she is. There's my Roxy girl. She's six months old. Look what I made for you, honey. Look. Treats. Treats are gonna go in there. She's like, that's not a treat thing. <laughs> She's got my <laughs> she put my earplugs out. <laughs> anyway, there, look. It's not her in the picture, but it's a picture that looks like her. It does. Dog. She's a very good dog, and she's very playful, and we love her. And I had no idea that we would love her as much as we do. And so, you know, I think it's about taking care of somebody else, taking care of a pet yes. or a friend, and having a little bit of um, joy, you know, taking some time out and just having some fun. And she gets us outside. She wants to go for walks. She likes to have treats. She loves to play with her ball. And it's just delightful. And I had forgotten about how much fun a dog is. I haven't had a dog for a long time. And it makes me want to play with my cats too, you know, because they're fun too. So it's great seeing everybody's pets. And I'm, I'm really glad that you came up with this great project. I enjoyed painting it. Thank you very much. And whether you have a flower or um, a butterfly or whatever it is that you just take time to delight in, that's the idea. Just take a little time to delight in something and have a joyful day. Thank you. <laughs> so definitely do that. And um, Melissa and I know very well how busy your life can get and so please do take time for yourself and enjoy it uh it goes by all too fast as we know as we get older so next week if you have any questions you can find me at cindy at cindyharrisonart.com or i have a a little bot that answers um, on cindyharrisonart.com and if I'm available you can talk to me right then and there you can also sign up for notifications when I go live with create this or with paint with heart and that's on Sundays create this 1 30 on bubbler media and three o'clock in the zoom room here with you all so thank you again for watching those who are here today. I loved all of your butterflies and you're sharing your pets with us. Uh, that's, you know, they are part of our families and we love them dearly and uh, enjoy every minute playing with them as well. So until next week, remember to always paint with heart. Good night, everyone. Thank you.